right? So I saw that on my Twitter feed one morning. I was like, oh my God, I have to use this in a, in a lecture. So <laughs> my husband teases me. He's like, only you can like see things in statistics and find them amusing. So, um, but but the whole point here is obviously you saw you know he's having to go through there was a change we got to redo the analysis all the cutting and pasting and blah 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 and you know oh by the way you know you probably didn't write down all your points and clicks and copies and paste and somebody else uh, wait wait what did they do did it get reformatted at this stage anyway okay um, and I'm going to show you guys a little bit more with this in a minute but um, this PowerPoint slide was actually built using our studio so this is an example where I've got our code embedded that's what the output looks like um, and then I was able to make this is a built-in data set called pressure and if you do a plot that's what you get so all right cool um, Let's see, there was, there was one other thing I wanted to show you guys here real quick. Do, 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 do. All right, so that was the R Markdown Gallery. There was, oh, there actually is one more. One more little video I wanted to show you real fast. All right, so I'll pull it back up here. Um, R Mark. All right, let me switch back to this one real fast. All right, so um, from the R Markdown homepage, um, instead of looking at the gallery, if we look at Get Started, um, there's this little video here about what R Markdown is, and it's only a minute and a half, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick intro. What is R you guys to just sort of hunt and peck around there's a lot of fantastic information this pretty much is the website for all of the information um, on our markdown so um, this is a great place to go and you can actually get um, information here on when you mentioned the parameters um, probably won't have time to do that one today but that's actually kind of handy because the goal is you could actually have a template um, and I, I, did a, I did a class with the CDC um, about three or four months ago, and you could imagine that you're going to do um, a standard kind of analysis, and let's say you do it um, and you run the report for country A, and then you decide you want to do the same exact report, but this time you're going to run it for the data from country B. And so you could do that easily where you build a standardized template that has all of the code and the analysis, the only difference is one data set's from, you know, this data source, another one's from a different data source, just different countries, and you could customize that and then just sort of crank that out. All right. So um, there's a few other laws and ends. I mentioned Bookdown. If you're interested in that, you just go to bookdown.org, um, and there's some really good books. This book, um, so the, um, there's a book here, and it's not official. I think you can pre-order it. It'll eventually be out in print through Amazon, I think, in November. Um, but Hadley Wickham is the basically the chief scientist at our studio, and he's written this book with Garrett Rolleman. I think it's now 400 pages. <laughs> it's a fantastic book, but they've got the whole thing here online. Um, and like I said, you can, you can pre-order it. And I th like I said, I think it's coming out in November um, in printed format. So O'Reilly has jumped on this bandwagon. There's a couple of different books now that you can do with them. Um, there's another one here on programming, if you're really into that. 
If we scroll down just a little bit more, there's actually a little simple example here by UEG. Um, and you can download this, and you can download the code, and you can start like using this as a template if you want to write your own book. So, and you don't have to use R. There are people um, playing with this. You could you could write a book on anything. It doesn't have to be programming. Um, all right, I'm gonna come back to that one. Okay. So if you haven't done so, and if you've got your sorry, if you've got your computer and ready to go. Um, so when you do this um, and you install everything, some of this was in that little help video that I sent, um, you actually end up installing both R and RStudio. Um, and when you install R, you get a separate little icon here for R. And I'm just going to show you, um, you can actually do the, the, all of the programming and analysis piece using this interface. But it's very simple. It's very stripped down. That's handy but it gives you absolutely no information. <laughs> there's no help here. There's minimal um, support. You kind of got to know what you're doing. And so you're sitting there looking at the cursor blinking at you. Um, so I'm not going to show you guys that, but just know if you, if you just need to run some R code, you can use this interface. Um, instead, we're going to use RStudio. And I've already, I've already got mine up and running, but... Um, there should be a little icon somewhere that kind of looks like this. It looks like a little ball with an R in the middle. So go ahead and launch our studio. And um, mine's going to look a little bit different than yours. Um, I'm actually running the development version. I'm hoping it doesn't look a lot different because I think the production version and the development versions are catching up to each other. Um, so hopefully it looks similar. <laughs> Um, it's common that that said when you first open it if you've never done anything with it before yours may look a little bit like this so you may not have a source window yet but by and large when this opens you get four window panes um, usually the bottom left is what's called the console so this is a little bit like for those of you that have worked in SAS or, or even in SPSS this is like your programming window this is like where you can write a command and execute it um, the top left window is where you'll actually write um, a script or that's actually where you'll save your program or in the case of what we're doing today this is where you'll create an R markdown file um, the top right side, somewhere I have a pointer, there it is. Um, the top right side here has some different information. Um, usually it'll have stuff about the environment, so like which variables have been created. So for those of you that have worked in SAS, this is like your work directory. It's like the temporary, it's where all the temporary files get stored. Um, and then on the bottom, the bottom actually has a lot of good information. So I'm going to make that just a little bit bigger. Um, this is where, um, depending on where you open, and, I, and I'll say a little bit about this in a minute, um, it'll show you uh, whichever directory you're in. This is like a little bit of like a file explorer window. So this is kind of like the library explorer window inside SAS. Um, you can see which files are there. Um, right now I don't have any plots, but if I had some plots generated, this is where I could review them. Um, I'll come back to packages in a minute. Um, the help window is here, um, and at the moment I don't have anything in my viewer. All right. So I'll take just a minute to mention packages. Um, by default, let me scroll down. When you install R and RStudio, sorry, I have like a thousand things in my memory, sorry. So hopefully y'all's has something similar to this. It's like if you scroll all the way to the bottom, it says system library. So there's a series of packages that get installed. And I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this with both like SAS and SPSS, and I suspect it's true in Stata as well. So when Emory does their site license, we negotiate, we get the base package and a number of add-ons. So with SAS, I think, you know, it's like you get the base package, you get... SAS stat and then there's a whole bunch of other modules that come with that license. Same thing in SPSS. We get SPSS base, we get the advanced statistics, we get 
something called the exact package. I think there's complex sampling. There, there's a bunch of others that get added on. R is very similar, but R is very transparent. Like it's not hidden <laughs> what you're doing. You have to sort of explicitly know which packages you're adding on, why you're adding them on, and so forth. Um, but that said, when you do this, there's a number of these that are actually built in. So I'm pretty sure Bootstrap's built in. Um, I won't talk some about these others. There's some code tools. There's like a whole series of little like built-in data sets that you can play with and run analysis on to test things. There's a package here called Forn that helps you read and write um, files from different software packages. Um, something called the mass package. Anyway, so in s statistics, so the basic stats package, all of that stuff's kind of built in. And so you may not see every single one of these, but you ought to see some, some stuff similar. So those are the ones that are kind of loaded by default. And then as you go, there's ones that um, need to be installed. So, um, and we'll cross that bridge because I'm not entirely sure for those of you that are starting vanilla. We'll see what works and what doesn't. And if it doesn't work, then we'll take a minute. I'll show you guys how to load stuff because <laughs> I think there's a lot of stuff that's already built in. Okay, so does everybody at least sort of see the different pieces? And, and you'll start to see how these how these work. All right. So, um, okay. Let's go ahead and just create a file. All right. So here in the file, new file, there's a bunch of different things that you can create. So the first one is a plain R script. Um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. There's something called R Notebook, which I'm not going to go into now, but um, have any of you guys ever seen or heard of like the different lab notebooks, these electronic lab notebooks? Python has one. Anybody ever used one or worked with a colleague that had one? Um, it's, it's becoming much more of a, of a thing now, especially with bench science. Um, to have these sort of electronic lab notebooks. It's the idea that anybody could see what you're doing and track your progress and it's all documented. Um, we're definitely going to do R Markdown. So primarily what I'm going to show you today is a little bit of a R script, but the R Markdown piece. Um, remember I mentioned the development that's going on with a thing called Shiny um, and the building these different sort of interactive web applications this is where you can start that process. Um, you could have a basic text file. If you're interested in writing C code, you can add that in. Um, and then there's some others down here as well. These are starting to be a little bit more um, like sort of older formats because um, you can almost do all of these using R Markdown. All right, so let's just go ahead and create. Just click new file R Markdown and I want to see how this works for everybody. Um, when you open this up, Again, you have multiple options. <laughs> We're just going to focus on document, but I'll show you these others. Um, presentation, there's different slides. So the slide set, set that I showed you this morning, I built using, um, I think, Slidey. Anyway, I go back and forth between these two. Beamer is PDF, and you got to have um, LaTeX installed to do that one. Um, you can build shiny applications and documents here. Um, remember I mentioned the templates? You guys probably won't see all of these because um, some of the templates get loaded with different packages. Um, hopefully some of these are there. It, there's a package called articles. And this is where you can get these Elsevier journal articles, the Journal of Statistics Software, the R Journal submission. Um, and, and this is a hot area of development. So there's going to be more and more of these template um, things getting pushed out from different um, publishers. Okay, but for now, just go to document, type in a title, whatever you want. My first markdown. Um, put in your name. I like teasing my son. Um, put in Princess Elsa because he's like, oh, God, not frozen again. <laughs> So, and I, I, I like teasing because one of my, my youngest nieces, she knows every word in the whole movie, every song. And so when I, so when I see them at Christmas, you know, we get all, we get all the kids together and stuff. And it's like, ask if we can play Frozen. <laughs> and then my son's like, no. <laughs> anyway, um, but you can put stuff in here. For right now, we'll do HTML. If you want to go straight to PDF, you can. And I'm going to show you something on Microsoft Word in a little bit. But for right now, we'll just do HTML and say OK. All right. So when this comes up, 
there's a couple of things and if you kind of remember in that quickie little R markdown video that I showed you he talked about and he pointed out some of the different pieces so let me walk you through the different pieces first of all were most of you able to create did it like create a document it didn't create oh okay all right <laughs> I'll come look in a minute um, 